Coming up, we have stories about DFHB club members, tattoos gone wrong, pregnancy announcement drama, secret house parties, work radio revenge, vinyl record drama, in-laws stealing cars, and of course, we have both cake and spicy reward stories. It's not a spicy cake. Those are two separate things. The title of this story is, Am I the Astronaut for Taking Away a Girl's Phone at a Sleepover? I have a 12-year-old daughter. Our rule is that children below 16 are not allowed to have smartphones. Most of her friends know this, and when they come to our house, they have to turn off their phones, which will be kept in a basket in our room if it's night. Recently, a new girl came to our house to hang out. She knew about the rule and kept the phone in a basket. The hangout turned into a sleepover, so I took her phone to my room, and I was going to lock it in my safe. She got scared and asked me if we could leave the phone in the basket, but I told her I couldn't because she might sneak into her room and that it will have to be locked in my room. She said she wasn't comfortable and asked what if an emergency happened. I told her if it did, she should come to me. She said she felt uncomfortable and wanted to go home if we were going to lock her phone, which is crazy how kids can't handle any fear or inconvenience. I ended up locking her phone despite her protest and refused to call her parents. I told her to at least try to enjoy the sleepover for a bit, and if she still couldn't survive without a smartphone, I'll call them. When my husband came back, he said I made a girl feel uncomfortable, and I should have at least let her keep it in the basket, but I stuck to my decision. The girl ended up having fun, but my husband and oldest daughter are mad at me. My oldest says I took away a girl's only way to communicate, and I made her feel unsafe. The girl ended up staying because I wouldn't call her parents, and she ended up having fun. But my husband and daughter are mad at me, and the girl's parents are also mad at me. Am I the ass cannot? <laughs> the chorus here. We got the, the chorus here. Uh, the girls are... Uh, Opie has a 12-year-old daughter. So her, her friend was probably 12 years old as well. If you, uh, if one of our girls stayed somewhere and they took her phone away and wouldn't let her communicate with us at all, uh, isn't that tantamount to kidnapping imprisonment? Isn't it? Are you, aren't you keeping someone somewhere against their will at that point? Uh, that's, that's not okay. That's uh that's not okay at all. And I understand wanting them to have like screen free time, but you cannot take their only method of communication away from them. You can't. I mean, I get limiting time. I get I get wanting them to engage without having screens in front of them. But also, you can't impose your rules on visitors either. Not when it comes to personal items. And this is a personal item. Essentially, you took someone's personal item away from them while they were in your house and your house, your rules. I know there are arguments for that side of it, but the emergency thing also flows two ways. What if the parents needed to reach her in case of an emergency that happened not to her, but to them? Taken away, the only way to communicate is 100% not. Okay. We'll go ahead and red flag this madness. This was... Okay, this was the wife. If this had been a, a dad that had done that, it would be even worse, I would imagine, making a girl feel unsafe, a 12-year-old girl feel unsafe. It's, it's not okay. It would be even worse in the eyes of the other parents, probably, if the dad had done this, but the mom doing it. Either way, it's not okay. You can't impose those kind of rules on people. You just can't. Oh, my God, it's Ganny Thunder. I would this, and I said that in a comment, but it would be like Mama Bear, like just completely... I would go, I would go crazy if someone did that to my child. Mama bear would be full. It would be, I would be seeing red if somebody did that to one of our, one of our girls. Like there's no, no freaking way. Those, ah. I, I can't imagine making a child feel uncomfortable in my own home. I mean, unless they're one of my. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine, I imagine some of the arguments here are, well, you know, what about, you know, before there were cell phones, you know, how, how did they survive? Let's. I don't. Care. like you don't get to make my child uncomfortable when she's a guest in your home you do not like and i would go a hundred percent crazy on your ass for doing this to my child because that's i mean like you said essentially kidnapping when the child asks to speak to their parents and they don't get to speak yeah. to their parents this isn't school Holding them this isn't somewhere yeah they wanted they wanted to talk to their parents and i don't care if she had fun or not she was forced to have fun she wanted to leave she wanted to get picked up. She wanted to yeah. contact her parents. And mom here was like, um, was like, yeah. nah, nah, I'm going to lock your phone up. You just, yeah. just give it a chance. So at that moment, yeah. I think it, it escalated to forcing someone to stay somewhere against their will. It's I, I could never, 
ever, ever like you could have caused this child to have like a panic attack or an anxiety attack because maybe she needed to call her mom before bed. Maybe she needed whatever it was with her phone. But you took that away because that's your rules. That's not that child's rules. Yeah. Don't invite kids over if you're going to take things away from them. It's uh, it's also odd that, you know, your house rules are the same rules that they have for escape rooms. Ooh, <laughs> I didn't like, even think about that. That's like, that's not okay. This is the beginning yeah. of a Saw movie, right? Like, it's hey. not not ideal here. If, Absolutely. if someone tried to take your phone, you call me immediately and I'm coming to get you and right. you're never going back to that Run house. Run outside, call us, and uh, continue getting further away from that house until you are safely with us. Yeah. So... They had no way of knowing that anything was wrong because their child had no way of communicating with them. They didn't find out until after the fact when they picked their daughter up that her phone had been taken away and that their daughter had no way to contact them. And that's when they got mad. Right. So it's not like they would just be like, oh, we haven't heard from her. We better check in with the parents to make sure. No, it it wasn't like that at all. Uh, We know from everything in the story that it was taken away. That she wanted to contact her parents, that she wanted to leave, and she wasn't allowed to by someone else's parents. And that's not okay. Uh, Someone had asked, also, what if it was a boy? Wouldn't matter. I don't think it matters if it's a boy or a girl. If you're forcing a kid that's not even yours and is a guest in your home to stay there against their will, taking personal items away from them and locking them up when they're no harm. When it's they're the only method you. of communication. Right. It's not okay. When they're specifically asking you not to do that because it makes them uncomfortable, that is not okay. It's yeah. just not okay. You're you're forcing a child to stay in your home and make them uncomfortable. They should have told the parent before the sleepover that they didn't want the phone. They were going to take the phone at night or whatever it was, but they didn't. They just took it and made the child uncomfortable. Right. And that's not okay. If you planned on doing that kind of thing, you needed to communicate these rules to that kid's parents ahead of time so that they knew what was going to happen. Springing this on her. You said she knew about the rule, yeah. a rule, but apparently the parents didn't. So you sprung <laughs> it on everybody. Kidnapping and strong arm robbery. Yeah. My child would never go there again. Exactly. Thanks for being here. I, I knew <laughs> she was part of the chorus that was like, yes, immediately. So I knew she had some strong feelings about this. Uh, we didn't talk about Ascon scale placement, but I think we all know where this goes. This is going straight up to Ascon 1. Congratulations, OP. You are the first Ascon 1 of 2024, and you happen to be the first effing story that we read. Batting a thousand so far. Here we go. DFHB. That's a new one. My mom compares a woman's name to a snack cake and thinks nothing of it. Oh, no. My mother, who was 60 at the time, has a habit of saying all the wrong things at all the wrong times. We might be related. I've even had people ask if this is something that happened as she got older. Sadly, no. This has been an always thing for her over my 42 years of life. This happened a few years ago while I was waiting in line with my mother at an open clinic. She and I both had stopped smoking a few months prior to this event, so yay for us. However, she turned into that loud, passive-aggressive person who would make comments as she walked by people who do smoke. There were people in line who were smoking, and she defaulted to what's listed above. However, there was one woman who was kind enough to get out of line while her friend held her place so she could smoke away from all the other people. This woman happened to be a little person. My mother defaulted to another bad habit of hers and started referring to the woman as cute, adorable, and little in a voice that you would use to describe a child. I was 37 at the time, and this woman obviously appeared to be around my age. Despite my mortification and other people's patiently closed mouths at her idiocy in reference to an adult woman, it gets worse. Since we were standing in line for a while, the woman got back out of it again to go smoke. Since my mother wanted to make it a point to all the other smokers who would not remove themselves from the line, she decided to ask around if anybody knew the woman's name so she could thank her personally. Since this was a weekly open in clinic, we did see some of the same people when I took her there. Yes, somebody knew her name, Debbie. The woman's name was Debbie. Oh no, I know where she's going with this. Don't do it. Don't do it. My mother grabbed my arm and exclaimed, Oh my God. (sighs) OP, honey. (laughs) Do you know what that makes me think of? I knew where this was going. I've heard the stupid flow from her on so many occasions. It's like I can see her thought process as it happens. I felt my soul leave my body as her next words came out of her mouth. Enter popular snack cake brand here. 
I can't even write it out. I don't think I need to. I had locked eyes with the man that was on the other side of her as he read something on my face. He and I had been conversing and telling jokes while trying to ignore her over the course of the wait. I'm a smart ass by nature, a defense mechanism I've developed dealing with her. It was like he knew what needed to be done, a kindred spirit and a shared embarrassing moment. So I asked her, I guess standing next to him makes you think of a chocolate bar to which he grabbed his shirt and said, you can call me Mr. Hershey. The people around us started laughing. She was more upset at my stopping her from approaching the woman. I told her let it go, which created an argument from her after we left. I called her actions to her face. It never stops her. She thought it was a harmless comparison. Thank you, Mr. Hershey. A hundred gold stars for the aid on this and a future occasion involving my mother at the same clinic again. It was always a pleasure having a fellow smartass in line. Okay, so this is a new type of story. This is DFHB, uh, which if you're new to this, it is the decent effing human being club which is uh which is our club we we actually have some dfhb content we have some dfhb stickers and uh and heck yeah that's awesome i'm glad that you had an accomplice here to be able to to share in this moment and try to break the the awkwardness with some additional humor even though it was at your mother's expense and thank goodness your cohort here uh agreed to to play along with you or you know you you had the kindred spirit and you took a bit of a risk and a leap saying what you said but luckily it seems like you had a good enough connection with this guy to to know that he was going to play along and uh and your mom getting mad uh at stopping her is is you know i get it I, but she was only 60 at the time uh i i don't i don't feel like 60 is the age in which you get to retire your filter and say whatever the f you want right like my grandpa is over 80 he's been there a while though I, but I'm kind of looking forward to getting to whatever that age is where I can say whatever the F I want. You're right. I mean, it doesn't really exist. I think it's just a perceived thing by an older generation. My grandpa's there for sure. He, yeah, he's there. For, he just doesn't care about the backlash at this point in life, even if it causes backlash in other people. Just doesn't care. I get that. And, you know, I don't I don't know what the opposite of an empath is, but somebody who is unable to see how their words or actions are going to harm another person, like have no no connection to feeling that at all is is not cool. It's I I mean, it's obviously not cool. Am I the astronaut for telling a friend what her tattoo really says? Oh no. Is this one of those things where they get a tattoo like in a foreign language and it says something that they had no idea it was going to say? And then they, and then yeah. <laughs> no, no regrets. Regrets? Is that a, no regrets? Throw away. My friend group knows my main account. I 37 male went out on New Year's Eve with a group of friends and the group has some friends of friends, basically people I've only known in passing. One of them, Andy 39 male, brought his girlfriend, Julie 30s female. Julie decided to show a tattoo she got last week. She rolled up her sleeve to show it and she proudly announced it said strength and beauty in Chinese. It was on her forearm and I almost did a spit take. Now, I have to explain I'm half Korean, but people have mistaken me as Hispanic, so I don't really look Korean to most Westerners. I'm also not fluent, but conversational in Korean and able to read. The tattoo was in Hangul characters, and it definitely did not say strength and beauty. Julie got upset at my spit take and asked what my problem was. I said, it's not Chinese, and it doesn't say what you think it does. She got even more mad and said, what would I know? I explained I was Korean American, can read Korean, and what it said was not nice. I asked her what happened at the tattoo shop, and she said she always wanted to get Asian characters and went to a shop and saw a Chinese guy in the shop and demanded he be the one to do her ink. (laughs) Oh, that's a great idea to walk into a tattoo shop and be like, you look Asian. I want an Asian tattoo. You're going to be the guy. Do it now. Sounds like uh, velvet and veneer. We might have watched a little bit too many trolls movies over the weekend. So I'm probably going to have some trolls references here. Uh, Yeah, that's where I'm at in life. I'm going to red flag this because that was not a smart move on her part. Um, I asked Julie and Andy if Julie did anything that could have pissed the tattoo artist off. She denied it, but Andy confessed she was super pushy about it and kept saying she wanted him to do it over any other artist in the shop because he would be used to the characters. Plus a few other statements. By this point, she was crying and not enjoying hanging out for New Year's Eve. She wanted to leave and wanted Andy to take her, which she still doesn't know what it says. Neither do we. 
On her way out, she asked me what it said. Oh, there, there it comes. I said, it's like the worst thing you could call a woman. It's like bitch, but worse. She just burst into tears while walking out. After the two of them left, the rest of my friends said I was a real jerk for spoiling her new tattoo, and I could have made something up or not reacted. What? Yes, how dare you tell her the truth? How dare you? How, how dare you let someone know who had something vulgar tattooed on their arm know that they had something vulgar tattooed on their arm? Like no one else in the world was ever going to see it or, or be able to translate it and be like, oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Is that like a warning label or? Yeah. <clears throat> I had to explain that the word used is really a cultural faux pas and to see it on skin is shocking to the highest degree. And the fact I was sipping on a beer when she revealed it only made a spit take impossible to avoid. Well, this morning I got some messages from friends saying I really should apologize to Julie for traumatizing her about her tattoo. I feel like this is ridiculous, like it's a really vulgar word on her arm, and if I had that on my skin, I'd like to know. But everyone else thinks that I should have just complimented her instead. So Reddit, am I the asshole for revealing to a friend what her tattoo actually says? Hell no. What? what? Okay, so I we, we go through this every once in a while where, where a group of friends or some bystanders or, or connections somehow will side with the victim in the situation, even when it doesn't make sense. And I can tell you right now, it's because they have to. They want the bullshit that they are now enduring because she's a handful and she's a mess and they're the ones who are sitting there having to deal with it to go away. So selfishly, they're saying, yes, you're in the wrong. Please apologize. Make it go away so their lives can get easier. It has nothing to do with them actually thinking what you did was the right or wrong thing. They're only thinking about themselves. What you did was the right thing. You told her that someone else had wronged her by putting this terrible label in ink permanent on her forearm and what she didn't want to know wouldn't you want to know what the hell i mean i guess if she really was that big of a b and maybe that's where they're coming from maybe they're like you know what she really is that you just compliment it smile and move on the other friends are are shitty here for wanting to hide it from her you yeah, should have just complimented this really terrible thing she had tattooed on her and just moved on makes total sense perfect sense All right, title of this story is Screw You and Your Cake. Trigger warning, cake was harmed. <laughs> Starting off on a great note here. The company started out being family owned and treated the employees great. Casual dress code, easy going. I was young and it felt more like going to hang out with friends versus going to work. I was a shift supervisor at the start. And as I said, all the calls got answered. Work was completed on time and everything was very laid back. The last family member died during my sixth year and a new board of directors slash CEO took over and everything went corporate overnight. Button down shirt, dress pants, no sneakers other than Fridays. I guess jeans and sneakers on a Friday doesn't lower the stock price. The team, the team I managed was all tech support, non-customer facing. So forcing them into dress shoes and dress pants seemed dumb. This was the start of my disgruntled nature. One of our CEOs who had an office in our building was so petty he would sneak into the call center on the weekends when the rest of the office was closed, take off his shoes so as to not make noise, and in his stocking feet, sneak into the back door of the call center to look under desks and make sure no one was wearing sneakers. <sighs> then complained to me and my manager when he found somebody. Another fun petty fact, I started pouring water on the kitchen floor by the call center back door so he could step in it with his stocking feet and just shrugged it off as somebody must have spilled something when he bitched. I got a new manager. He was vastly untechnical and micromanaging. A very, very annoying man. He was also very, very passive. He'd do something stupid. I'd yell at him face to face in his office and he would say nothing after sitting down at my desk 10 feet away from his office. I would get a strongly worded email about our interaction. Along with the new corporate overlord changes, the company got super cheap unless it was managers, meetings or special occasions where they could put on the public appearance of being a family friendly place to work. 
Cue the company's 10-year anniversary. All the bigwigs came down to our office and flew in from other states. They have a huge sheet cake that was the name of the company and 10 years written on it. It was sitting unguarded in the cafe. And as I was walking through, I noticed nobody was around. Grabbed a knife from the table and cut out a perfect square out of the middle of the cake and... (laughs) I ate it with my bare hands. I nearly choked trying to eat it so quickly, worried somebody would come into the cafe. Imagine that Heimlich maneuver. (laughs) Hey, what's he choking on? Stolen cake! I washed my hands quickly of frosting and flee. A few minutes later, our CEO, flanked by his cronies, came storming through the call center, yelling that he wanted to know who ate the cake. They had a professional photographer who was going to take a photo of all of them behind the cake for the local newspaper, and now the 10 years had a huge chunk of the company name is missing. I sat quietly and said nothing. In fact, this is the first I've spoken about this in 15 years. F you and your cake. End of story. Uh, Yeah, you definitely get the petty confetti for that one. You get the petty confetti for sure. <laughs> Not the... You know what? Um... I feel like I should be mad about this because a cake a cake was harmed, but it was, you know, it wasn't sacrificed. It was for a good cause. And she ate it. It's not like she cut if she had cut a square out of the middle and threw it in the trash, I'd be pissed. But she cut that square out of the middle and ate it. And if they're having a professional photographer come take a picture of this for the paper, guess what? Uh Photoshop can fill that void back in and make it part of the cake again like that no big deal so uh so there is actually a really easy solution to it there and it it isn't as much pain as the ceo is is writing it up to be or is portraying it to be here is it is all just you know much ado about nothing it really is uh the only harm that was done here was was pissing off the ceo and it sounds like as petty as this guy is you know he, he deserves to be pissed off and he deserves to be faced with a problem that he can't fix If he's petty enough to sneak into the office on the weekends when only the call center is there and to look under the desk to make sure nobody is wearing sneakers in a call center. You know, he reminds me of, especially when when OP talks about him being flanked by his cronies as they were walking down the hall. The boss in um, Christmas vacation, the boss in Christmas vacation. Yeah, who doesn't remember anybody's name? He's like, "Ah, put put the gift over there with the others. And they all look the same. That's that's who this guy reminds me of. Uh, And he got his, too. So, you know, what, what does that tell you? Also, man, if this, if this CEO of a company is willing to come in here and, and do that on a weekend, like if that's where his focus is, this company can't be doing well. That's not bottom line focus, right? That's not, that's not big organizational change. That's not, that's not keeping an organization healthy. That's just being super controlling and super petty. And it's very distracting for everybody. Oh, yeah. You know what? 15 years ago, you're right. 15 years ago, Photoshop wasn't, it is, wasn't what it is today. Uh, I still could have done it. <laughs> you could rebuild that and make it look real easy. Easy. You could do it. You could do it. 15 years. Yeah, it was around. It was just, uh, it was just wasn't, wasn't what it is today with like adaptive fill and that kind of thing. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. You could rebuild it. Definitely could rebuild it. Cake was still edible. Yeah, yeah, it just it just had a hole out of the middle. That's it. That's it. So even though cake was harmed in this, um, but yeah, I, I still I give you the applause here, Opie. I like it. I like it. It's worth it. it. And you enjoyed the cake. You didn't throw it away. It was for a good cause. Uh, and you know, I'm. It's 15 years later. I'm assuming nobody ever got busted for it. So he just had to had had to deal with the the cake, or just took a picture without the cake, or something. Yeah, that micromanaging is is rough. And it's not even it's not even productive micromanaging. You know what I mean? It's it's like about stuff that legitimately has no bearing. If anything, it is micromanaging on a thing that makes your your employees, your teammates, your team members less comfortable and thus less likely to do their job well. So why? 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 Okay, this story is titled, Am I the Asconaut for Announcing My Pregnancy at My Wedding? It's your wedding. It's your party and you do what you want to. 
I, 27 female, got engaged to my boyfriend of four years, 28 male, a little over a year ago. My family and his family have been so happy and excited for us. My family and his know that we both want kids and have wanted them for a while. Around four months ago, I found out that I was pregnant. We were going to wait until after we got married to try to have kids, but since I was pregnant, we decided to announce it at our wedding that was planned to be three months later. It got harder as the weeks went on to hide it, but I managed. Two weeks ago, we finally got married. Despite what happened after the fact, it was the best night of my life and I don't regret one bit of it. Before people started leaving the reception, my husband and I gathered everyone to announce our pregnancy. Once we did, almost all of the people there were happy for us and excited for us, except my mother-in-law. Yeah, it's just completely shocking that this would be the one person that wouldn't be happy for you on like the biggest day of your life. It is totally shocking. I, I'm so shocked. I'm going to throw some red flags in the air because it's like, wow. She called me selfish and rude for making the wedding all about me and that my husband deserved attention too, not just me. Almost everyone there stopped talking, but my husband quickly defended me to his mother. I tried to explain to her that I wasn't trying to take the attention away from my husband and that I just wanted to make the day even more special, but she wouldn't have it. My husband continued to defend me, but my mother-in-law just said that I brainwashed him not only into marrying him, but also having a baby with me. This visibly upset me, but I didn't say anything. I just walked away. I went to the bathroom for a few minutes in order to try to calm myself, but it didn't help much. After about six or seven minutes, my husband came to check up on me, apologized for his mother, and asked if I needed anything. After another ten minutes or so, I returned to the main area to start the after party. I noticed that my mother-in-law wasn't there anymore. I asked my husband why, and he told me that she stormed out right before he came to check up on me. I felt bad, but I continued to enjoy the after party. The afternoon after the wedding, I decided to go on my phone and text everyone to thank them for coming. Once I opened my phone, I noticed that I had a text from my mother-in-law. It consisted of her calling me a, a selfish biznatch who only cares about myself and that I don't really love my husband and that I don't deserve to have a baby with him. I blocked her phone number and haven't told my husband that she texted me. I'm not sure if I should tell him or not since I don't want this to ruin his relationship with his mother over something like this. Am I the astronaut for announcing my pregnancy at my wedding? Should I tell my husband about what his mother texted me? Okay, two separate questions here. Are you the astronaut for announcing your pregnancy at your wedding? Hell no. Also, you guys announced it together as something that you were both excited about. How are you detracting anything from him? What she really meant was, how dare you take the spotlight off of me? Because there's no way that she can make your pregnancy about her, right? But as we often see mother-in-laws do at weddings, she of course, probably up to that point, felt like she was the star of the show and now she didn't have the ability to compete with you had just done. So she's like, okay, well, I'll just throw a tantrum then and then I'll just take my ball and go home. So she did, although I think what she didn't realize was that she was trying to storm out as if that was punishing people, but she really did everybody a favor, right? Like the night got much better after she left. So, so it's like she thought she was winning, but really that was you winning. But you absolutely have to tell your husband about her messages to him. Your husband, your new husband here, uh, did the right thing by standing up for you. Probably would have been nice if he did it a little more firm, but she ended up leaving. So he did an adequate job in standing up for you, especially in front of everybody. Not allowing his mother to treat you like that is a good thing. Good job, new hubby. Good job. But... He can't defend you if he doesn't know that you're being attacked, right? You have to let him know that his mother has crossed a line yet again. And while you've blocked her, you've personally said no contact, no mas. He needs that opportunity as well. And he can only make that choice if he has all of the information. He obviously doesn't agree with how she's treating you. So give him the opportunity to make his own choices. If you withhold information from him, you are making choices for him and removing that freedom. Make sense? He showed you an incredible amount of love and loyalty by standing up to his mother at your wedding right after you had announced your pregnancy. Give him the same opportunity by telling him that this has happened now. And it wasn't just a, a spur of the moment thing. This wasn't an, an anomaly because, you know, if it was the spotlight thing and she got fed up and she wanted it to be all about her, she had a moment, that moment wouldn't have trickled over into the next day where she, where she basically confirmed that she still feels this way. It wasn't a one-time thing. I wasn't having a fit. I am still pissed. You have to let him know. 
have to. Am I the astronaut for not telling my friend her daughter had a party? I have just got back from a Christmas holiday today. While I was away, I paid my friend Greta's daughter, Alana, 16 female, to come by every day and feed my cat. Alana is a responsible, kind, and hardworking girl who had cats sat for me before and babysat my kids. I trust her. Greta also has four much younger nieces and nephews in her care. Alana loves them, but they don't give her much personal space. I told Alana that she should feel free to use my place if she needed time on her own to chill out. And if she wanted, she could have a friend over too, as long as she thought the friend was trustworthy. I let Greta know that I had made this offer. When I walked in today, I legitimately thought my cleaning lady had been around, and I was confused because I thought she was taking this fortnight off. The house was pristine. There was the faint smell of cleaning products in the air. It looked better than when I had left. The cat was happy and well cared for. Chatting to my next door neighbor just now, he mentioned that it sounded like the kids at my place on New Year's Eve had a great time. I mean, at least they cleaned up afterward, right? I asked for clarification, and it sounds like Alana had more than one mate over. There was music, possibly tipsy laughter, a bit of squealing, and general frivolity. My neighbor was not complaining at all. His family wasn't disturbed by it. He thought it was nice that they were having a good time. A few things. Greta is a wonderful parent and a good friend who is very strict with her kids, much more than I am with mine. She definitely would not have sanctioned this gathering. If she finds out, Alana will be in trouble. I've known Alana for years and met some of her friends. I can practically guarantee there would have been nothing worse than one bottle of passion pop or whatever the young folk drink these days between the lot of them, if they were drinking at all. If there were any boys here, I would be incredibly surprised. Having a covert party is irresponsible, sure. Although it sounds weird, she is the kind of kid I would trust to be personally irresponsible and not let anything get out of hand. The kids didn't break anything or steal anything and clearly cleaned the place from top to bottom afterwards. Will I be the astronaut if I just pretended the conversation I had with my neighbor never happened? Should I let Alana know, even if I don't tell Greta? Oh, so to catch you guys up, um, if you're just now popping in, uh, OP had a friend's daughter. Was it a friend's daughter or a niece? Had a friend's daughter um, house sit for her, basically, and cat sit, cat sit, um, and she said that she could crash there and and uh, have a friend over if she liked. She ended up having a New Year's Eve party, but cleaned it pristinely. And the neighbor said it sounded like the kids there had a great time. This this friend's daughter's mom, so the friend is super strict. So OP is now struggling with: Do I tell her? Do I tell my friend that her daughter had a party at my house, even though she didn't? She was very responsible about it. Left it cleaner than she had uh, than OP had left it. Um, or does she just pretend like that conversation with the neighbor where they said it sounded like they had a great time? Even just forget about it. Should she pretend like that conversation never happened? <laughs> Tony Spark, you know what they say about snitches. <laughs> this 16 year old girl named Alana, who's apparently like a straight edge kid, is going to show up and be like, Are you a narc? She's got her brass knuckles out. Yeah, I was going to say, Yeah, you might have a new cleaning lady there. Yeah. So, okay. So, so I expected, I expected this to be kind of a a torn thing. Let it go. Just don't make it a habit. Keep quiet. Encourage her to fess up herself. So, uh, I mean, you have to look at the allegiances here. This is your friend's daughter, right? And I would say if you had, if the connection here was directly to Alana, it would be a different story. But because the the connection is directly to your friend, I feel like your first allegiance is to your friend. And wow, yes, she did have an unsanctioned party. She was extremely responsible about it. So it is either find a way to communicate this to your friend without with like softening the blow and not not straight up outing her or do communicate directly to Alana and say, hey, I know this happened. Um, it's put me in a really weird position because now I either have to pretend like it didn't happen to my friend, your mom, uh, or I have to feel like I'm ratting you out. I don't want to be in that position. I would love to give you the opportunity to come clean yourself. 
and I will help smooth it over because you you partied in the most responsible way that I've ever seen anybody party. It almost seems like it's they got it too clean, like uh, like there had been something really bad happening there. Not to get brought in the crime scene cleanup team and bleached everything down. Do not tell. Mom is never going to let her house sit for you again. Well, if you do or don't tell, though, I feel like where's the trust here? The trust is between OP and her friend. That's the hard part is OP has been put in a really, really tough position here. And while I my my gut instinct is like, oh, just just let it slide. At least, I mean, she covered it up so well. There's no way to cover up that amount of noise, though. And that's that's where a lot of got sloppy. So if anything, you know, if you were going to be the cool, the cool mom's friend, if anything, say to Alana, like, hey, if you're going to try to hide it, make sure you're you're doing something about the noise next time, because neighbor Joe here did mention it to me. But nice job leaving the leaving the place pristine clean. Uh, that's if you're going to take the cool, the cool mom's friend route. I, I really feel like the allegiance here is to the friend, though. I feel like there's got to be a way to get yourself out of this awkward position. It would be great if Alana took care of that herself, but you know what? You know who I really want to chime in on this? We really want Tony Spark to chime in on this. So I I can relate with the uh I can relate with the what was her name? Alana or Alana. Yeah. yeah, so when I was uh, in my younger days, um when my parents would be out of town, you know, I may have had a small gathering with a couple of friends and uh we didn't do as Get a job cleaning. Um, we didn't quite do as good a job of cleaning his Alana, and there may have been a, may or may not have been a hole that appeared in some drywall, and um, so I needed some help fixing it because I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, <clears throat> actually, a friend of our, a family friend of ours who actually worked for my dad at the time, and her husband was a contractor, so he actually came over and looked at it. And then we would, every time I'd have a party, they had a dumpster at their house, so I would take all of our beer cans and stuff over there. And as far as I know, they never said anything to my parents, so they were the, they were the cool people, so I appreciated that. And I had said a lot of people, different people in my life that have been the cool people. I also like to think that I'm the fun uncle, too, so I, you know, the statute of limitations isn't quite up for that one yet, so I'm going to just, I'm going to, I would not, I would, I would maybe have the conversation with Alana. I would say, Hey, look, I don't care. As long as you guys are being safe, being careful, you clean up, don't break anything. Don't do anything too stupid. Just be smart. And you know, no harm, no foul. Nothing happened. It was all good. Now, if something would have happened it'd be a whole different story. You know, if she shows up and a bunch of stuff is broken or somebody gets hurt, that would obviously be not a great thing, but no harm, no foul. Tony's a fun uncle. I'm a fun uncle. I get it. This story is titled The Story of the Work Radio. Hey guys, long time lurker, first time poster. Let's get into it. It all started seven to eight years ago. I used to work outdoors in an industrial setting that was rather loud. I worked by myself on a little island and there were two teams that worked nearby on a set of concrete slabs. Between all of us was one communal radio. The issue began with the diversity of the employees. There really wasn't any common ground when it came to music choice. Eventually, we developed days where each of us would get a turn choosing the music that was enjoyed by the surrounding workers. It was going great until one day it was my day to choose the music and being the nice, considerate person I am, I made a playlist on my phone that contained music from everyone's listening preferences. I thought it was a genius move and figured this would at least provide us all with satisfaction and be able to enjoy listening to music that everyone can enjoy, or so I thought. Working this job, I had to hop in and out of forklifts to move pallets occasionally, typically three to four times a day for 30 minutes at a time. While doing so, my phone was kept at my desk so as to not interfere with the music. So this day, I hopped in the forklift, humming to some music I had stuck in my head. I finished running pallets back and forth, hopped out of the forklift, and began working on the next set of pallets until I noticed the same genre of music had been playing for 15 to 20 minutes. I looked at my phone and noticed the music was paused and definitely stopped on a song that was not playing. I thought to myself, that's odd. Maybe the phone randomly disconnected or something, so I adjusted the radio back to Bluetooth and went about my business. Next forklift tripped, comes and goes, and again the music has changed. At this point, I know someone is messing with the radio, so I flipped it back to Bluetooth and started playing music that I know everyone around me isn't a fan of, but I love. 
why be the nice guy when it's not appreciated? This goes on for weeks. I play my choice of music, and every time I get in the forklift, it changes. I just change it back every time I get out, even though some people start hooting and hollering at me. Oh, well, I'm here to work, not make friends. Eventually, the radio dies as it was old and exposed to the elements sometimes. We go a week without a radio, and I get an idea. Nobody wanted to put up for a communal radio, as it was clear other people couldn't agree on sharing. Remember, folks, sharing is caring. I decided to take some money from my next paycheck, buy a nice big Bluetooth speaker, and post it at my workstation. Everyone thought it was so cool. How nice of me to bring it in. And the smile on my face kept getting bigger and bigger. They didn't realize that I wasn't going to be sharing this speaker. They came up with a schedule, proposed it to me, and watched me rip it up in front of them. Instead, they had to endure weeks of me blasting Kentucky bluegrass and old country music, whichever I saw fit. The tension in the workplace could be cut with a knife. They knew I was doing it despite them, and there was nothing that they could do about it. It took them a month of trying to hide my speaker, trying to bully me into letting them use it before they went out and bought a radio from Walmart. Unluckily for them, my speaker was still louder. Friggin' love it. And you get the petty, the petty confetti for that one. That's fantastic. You bought it yourself. I mean, what? They just thought that they had, uh, thought that they had some communal ownership rights to it because you were the one who took the initiative to buy it and bring it in. Hell no. Also, I mean, headphones are a thing, right? Headphones are a thing. If everybody can't agree on things like, yeah, just do the head. I know some places aren't allowed to use headphones for safety, for safety reasons. But if, if nobody can agree on the, on the music that's being played here, uh, that's where headphones come in handy. And this happens here sometimes too. Like we'll have some music playing that a couple people aren't particularly fans of and the headphones go on. They don't bitch about it. They just put their headphones on. <laughs> it's like candy and Tony are both like, eh, no, no, we'll bitch about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not on a forklift. Yeah. So there, there are some occasions where it won't work out for that, but, um, but Tony left some notes on here and said, this could be a good DFHB club question and the ask on scale could still be applied. Okay. So it does this person, uh, is this a DFHB club move? I mean, if they had bought it and, and made it communally readily available for everybody, like it would be, it would be the nice guy thing to do, but he tried to do the nice guy thing before. And got burnt, burnt, burned. I don't know. He tried to do the nice guy thing before by creating a mix of things that everybody would like, and they took advantage of it. So that's typically what happens to nice guys, right? You're a nice guy until somebody screws you enough times to where you become an asshole. To what it happens. Uh, scale wise, here, I man, I don't know. I don't. I I I think this is an NTA thing, man. I mean, it was, you tried to do the right thing multiple times. Every time got taken advantage of until you eventually said, screw it. I'll do my own thing. Um, and you still provided music. Something's better than nothing. Right. I mean, when it comes to, comes to work, I love to have music rocking. Uh, I can't, it's like, I can't work with silence going on. I need there to be some kind of driving beat and force. And it's like a rhythm, a rhythm to the day or the or rhythm to whatever I'm doing at that time. Uh, silence drives me absolutely nuts. So I'd rather have something that I don't like than, than silence. Uh, clearly not everybody agrees with that kind of thing, but, uh, but I think you were still doing them a service and still doing them a favor by having it playing. Even after you bought your own Bluetooth speaker and were playing just the music you like. So I think it's an NTA. It's an NTA from me. Am I the Askinoff for bringing white chocolate cake when asked to bring chocolate dessert? I, 24 female, recently moved to the city most of my paternal families live in. I grew up in another city and went to college on a different coast and wasn't close with them, spending only six Christmases with them growing up. I visited everyone in person once I moved in, so they know I'm living in the same city. I'm a pretty good cook and baker, so when I was invited to a potluck family party at my grandparents, I brought chicken stew, which received a lot of praise. One of my aunts asked if I also bake, and I said yes, showing them a few pics of my baked goods. My cousin Lisa, 30 female, then invited me to her little gathering, telling me it's a drink and dessert party and that the theme is chocolate. I made a beautiful white chocolate cake for the party. It wasn't big, as Lisa told me there would be like 10 people attending, but because it was small, I was able to make it a little fancier with silver and white winter decorations. 
Everyone exclaimed how beautiful the cake was, and when Lisa put it on the table, it, it stood out as the rest were different shades of chocolate brown. My cake was praised. The food and drink were delicious. I hung out with my cousins and met Lisa's friends and her husband's family. I thought everyone was nice. Later, Lisa called me, not exactly complaining, but telling me next time I should keep to the theme of the party. I told her I did, as white chocolate is chocolate. Lisa said that her husband's sister and a couple of nieces thought it was inappropriate of me to bring a dish that stood out so much, completely ignoring the party theme. They felt all everyone talked about was my cake. They asked Lisa to tell me to tone it down or don't invite them or me to the same party because they can't stand someone so attention-seeking. Personally, I didn't think I did anything wrong, but this is a group of three people thinking the same thing, so am I the Askinaut? Holy shit, it's not just mother-in-laws, ladies and gentlemen. It is the I love it. Could you be not so good so you don't take all the attention? That was the problem. They they literally said they didn't want you to detract from the other things. You did stick to the theme. They didn't they didn't give you a color palette to work with. They said the theme was chocolate. You did chocolate. You did it too well. That's the problem. It wouldn't have mattered if you brought a, a milk chocolate or dark chocolate thing. That was the brown tones that are on the palette for the party theme. If it was as delicioso as it likely would have been because you're good and spent extra time on it, it would have received additional praise as well. And then it wouldn't be a matter of it being not on brand but it would be just a matter of you being too good. So they they just used whatever they could. They would have found something different if they had to, but it was just the easiest thing for them to grab. And it's because they didn't like you being so good that you stole the show, which from your perspective, I got to think if this is a party full of ass bags like this, do I really want to go anyway? If I, if I have to, if I have to hold myself back and not be too good because people can't handle me being too good. Do I really want to be there anyway? I don't think you do. So the question here was, am I the astronaut for bringing white chocolate cake when asked to bring chocolate dessert? Hell no. It sounds delicious. And you know what? A lot of people aren't fans of white chocolate, so they would have enjoyed the other, the other desserts more. They felt like less than because yours stood out so well. So it is petty and it is a stupid thing for them to get shitty about and to make a specific request to you or you say she wasn't really complaining, but that was a complaint. Them asking you to do something differently uh, because it made, it didn't make them feel good. You probably don't want to be around those people. Uh, Miss Elaine says, I don't think anybody called complaining except the host. She, correct. Now, when the host called, she had said that a few other people had said something, too, which could be bullshit. It could be her just blowing smoke to try to add some credibility to her claim here. That could absolutely be the case. Very could be. Very well could be. Uh, it's an NTA for me. And uh, now white chocolate cake sounds freaking good. Am I the astronaut for breaking up with my girlfriend over music records? I, 25 male, and my girlfriend, 25 female, have been together for three years, and we just moved in together. I pay rent because she's not currently working. We have very different music tastes. She is a hardcore Taylor Swift fan, only listens to Taylor Swift, and I love rock bands and all. Radiohead, Blur, Foo Fighters, Nirvana, Arctic Monkeys, etc. My point is that she has every Taylor Swift record, vinyl, and I have many of my own favorites. She doesn't like what I listen to at all. I don't like Taylor Swift, but I tolerate her for my girlfriend's sake. She keeps saying that Taylor is the music industry and that no one's better. As I said, hardcore Swifty. Two days ago, I came home and most of my records were gone. I asked her where they were since they're pretty expensive and my favorite hobby. She said she got rid of them. I was furious. Got rid of them? I asked her why and she said she didn't like that I listened to so much depressing music and that people who listen to rock are very toxic. What even? I got mad and told her to get out. She started screaming at me because I'm an idiot who doesn't know what real music is. At this point, I didn't even care what she did and after some more screaming and yelling, she left. I sent her a text yesterday and told her that we're over and she can come pick up her things. She told everyone that I'm a toxic a-hole and that I'm crazy. 
P.S. I'm not even sad. I just want my records back. Am I the astronaut? No, this is not about a Taylor Swift thing. This is about someone thinking that their thing is the only thing and being completely intolerant of every other kind of thing that is out there. Coincidentally, we happen to be listening to the soundtrack from Trolls 2, which is the the what Age of Rock or what is it called? World Tour. Uh the yeah, so so Trolls 2 is about it, it's just coincidentally is the rockers are trying to um to make all the trolls like one nation under rock but it's not it's not rock specific it's it is about um there being intolerance of different tastes and different styles of music and eventually they all become educated and everybody accepts everybody for who they are right but the lesson there is the intolerance is the ignorance right and this person who doesn't matter what kind of music she was latching onto it could have been flipped um and it's the intolerant person who just completely not only just didn't have any respect for their partner's kind of music, didn't have any respect for their partner, took things that belonged to them and threw them out. That goes beyond just intolerance for for someone's music taste. She just has no respect for you at all, bro. That is not okay. And it's a good thing that you just went ahead and said, okay, that's over the line. Ah, we're through because that's just wild. Like nobody, nobody does that kind of thing. Um, and, and I know there are a lot of people who are very, very, very adamant about their style of music being the only good one, but my God, there are so many beautiful styles of music out there and they each have their time and place. And there's no, there's no room or place in this world for intolerance. There just isn't like, who cares? Why are you trying to impose your will on someone else? Why are you trying to impose your, your freaking taste on somebody else? Why are you trying to force someone else to be just like you? That's one of the lessons in Trolls 2, too. And I hate that I'm using Trolls 2. I hate that I'm using that as like the reference point for everything here because it makes me a complete toddler dad. But it is so good and it teaches such great lessons. And yeah, it's it's not just Bluey that teaches great parenting lessons. It's also Trolls, too. But it's like a great world lesson. The intolerance is just it's unforgivable here. And the fact that she took things of yours without even talking to you first and just got rid of them and thinks because you listen to rock music that you're a depressed, toxic person. Like <sighs> she is definitely an ass con one. So we're going to put her on that record and send it all the way up to the top. She hit the, uh, she hit the number one spot. Am I the astronaut for calling my 23 female husband, 23 male, an incel? Oh. Some background, I, 23 female, have been with my husband, 23 male, for about four years. Only about six months married. I love him dearly, and he's a very sweet guy. He's pretty conservative. We differ in that regard, and most of his male friends are as well. Back in college, a few years ago, my husband and some of his friends started following this conservative male influencer on social media. This man's whole shtick was essentially shaming random men on the internet for simping for their girlfriends or wives. How did he do this? Fans would send him photos of random straight couples, which he would screenshot and draw green lines over, indicating which directions the man and woman in the photo were leaning. If the woman was standing straight up in the photo and her man was leaning in towards her, the influencer would dub the man a simp and post the photo online for everyone to make fun of. The ideal photo, in the influencer's opinion, was one where the man was standing straight up and his woman was leaning into him. Anything else, and the man was a simp who could not control his woman. Yes, this is 100% real. Can confirm. Have seen it. Obviously, I didn't love that my now husband was a fan of this influencer, but he reassured me that it was all a joke and that he didn't actually believe anything that this guy said. I believed him until I started to notice that when we would take pictures together, my husband was pulling away from me and attempted to have me lean into him. At first, I brushed it off, but it kept happening. This irritated me because I don't particularly love my side profile, but I was being forced to turn to the side and lean into him for every single photo we were taking. I would try to pull away so that I could face the camera head on, but he would pull me back in and or refuse to move. I confronted him about this a few times, but he always said that he wasn't doing anything and I was making it up. Oh, good defense, bro. I brushed this off for a while and over time, as our relationship progressed, we weren't taking as many photos anyways. 
but this all came to a head when last weekend we were visiting his family for Christmas. My husband was mentioning how he and I don't have enough recent photos together, so his sister offered to take one for us. We posed for the photo, me facing straight ahead with his arm around me, but once again I noticed that he was trying to angle me sideways and pull himself away from me. I got frustrated and stepped away, saying that I no longer wanted the photo. He asked me why, and I told him that he was doing the thing he always did, forcing me to have my side profile photographed when all I wanted was a normal, straight-on photo. I asked him if he could please let me take a photo facing the camera, and his answer shocked me. He said that he didn't like it when I was facing the camera, and he was leaning more into me because, and I quote, our green lines were bad. I am 100% serious. My husband didn't want me to have a flattering photo because he thought that according to this influencer, it would make him look like a simp. I asked him if he was serious and he said yes. There is probably where I'm the asshole. I got so frustrated and accused him of prioritizing the opinions of some random incel over those of his own wife. I then said that he needed to stop being an incel himself and take one single normal photo with me. He got very angry that I had insinuated that he was being an incel. Is that how you say it? Incel? I don't freaking know. And refused to take any photos with me. I later apologized for what I said, but he's been short with me ever since. I know that what I said was inappropriate, but I just can't believe that he won't take a normal photo with me. So am I the astronaut or is he? What are the green lines? So the green lines are this thing this influencer uses to try to to try to prove that it's like a compatible couple or that that a dude is a simp for his uh, for his lady partner. If he leans in, into her, uh, she's supposed to be leaning into him. And it's it's, it's it's nonsense. I mean, he applies a, a lot of science to it. And I've even seen him do it to the Travis and Taylor pictures. I want to take a picture of where you're standing at and I'm laying like face down on the ground and be like, how do these lines look? Uh, <laughs> how do these lines look? What is an incel? Okay. Uh, Caden Thunder says you can come on up. Caden Thunder is going to explain what an incel is in a, uh, in a polite way. So, so from my understanding, what that is, is it could be someone who wants to date, but doesn't have the, someone who wants to date, but doesn't have the ability to date. So, for instance, if you were a dude and you were kind of disrespectful to women and you really wanted to date a woman, but they didn't really want to date you because of how you treated them, you'd just be like, well, they all suck. Involuntarily celibate. Yeah. That's the answer we're getting from Chad. Thank you, guys. We appreciate that. Yeah. Involuntarily yeah. celibate. I, I like your explanation there, too. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Thank you, Caden Thunder. Uh <laughs> It's uh so the question here was am I the astronaut for calling my husband an incel? No. No. I the fact that you talked about this, you made you made him aware that you had a problem with what he was doing and confronted him about what he was doing and he denied it. Then kept it up for a long period of time, then it finally came to a head and he admitted that he was doing this bullshit. Uh is a problem. It's a big problem. Uh the fact that he's buying into this and forcing you to do something that you're vocally uncomfortable with. Now you're at an impasse right here because you've got something that he has convinced himself he's uncomfortable with. And there's something that you already know that you're uncomfortable with and you guys are butting heads over it. There's got to be a way to communicate through this, but there's got to be an understanding and some long conversation about where you guys are both at and what your understandings of each other's realities are. And at that point, it's a, how do we move forward from this? But there's some, there's some worldview differences now that weren't there, you know, a few years ago, but now you have some worldview differences that are putting you, putting you at odds with each other. And that's tough. It's, it's tough to have a real life partner that you can be a partner in life with when you're seeing two completely different worlds all the time, especially about the levels of respect that you have for your partner. If that's one of the big differences that you have as people, that's going to be tough, you know, uh, time to get Time to get on the same page there or or not, but to make a decision one way or the other. 